Today is about the trajectory of where we're going and signals the beginning of something new. Uh, this morning we announced our transition into the ASUN conference effective July 1 of this year. To say that we're excited about this move is obviously a gross understatement. I have no doubt that we have identified a conference partner who will allow both our institution and our athletics department to benefit and forge an even brighter future building upon our story past. Joining the ASUN gives us the opportunity to share our story with so many more. This is another step in a very bold journey to elevate our institution further and faster than we ever have before. The work starts now and we're excited to rise with the A-Sun. Good evening, everyone, and welcome in. Our players, as you see there, will join us in just a moment. Excited to have you with us tonight as we talk EKU soccer with a few members of our teams. Head, head coach Matt Kosnick will join us in just a little bit as well. It is day one for this program for the 2021 season. Uh, it, it's going to be a great year after a, a strong spring season for this squad, and we'll talk about uh, what COVID did to change some things with him uh, a little bit later on. And uh, much more still to come as we get through this evening and talk transition today. Son, a, a new group of young players, a, a, a group of players who really going through their first season. And we'll talk about all that with Coach Matt Kozinuk here over the next little bit. Uh, but first, we're going to talk to a few of our players who can't wait to see you come out and see them this year over at the EKU Soccer Complex. Let's Hello. Hello. Hey. Do we introduce ourselves? <laughs> okay. Well, hey, I'm Lauren. I'm a senior on the um, women's soccer team, and I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee. And you guys want to introduce yourselves? Um, I'm Audrey. I'm from Somerset, Kentucky, and I'm a junior. I'm Maddie. I'm from Orlando, Florida, and I am a full. Am I junior? I'm Allison. I'm a sophomore, and I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I'm Kara. I'm a sophomore, and I'm from Daytona Beach, Florida. <laughs> it's uh, it's not easy in this world right now to remember what year in school you are uh, with the way COVID has hit everything over the last year. So um, wh where we joke, that may be a t tougher question than some think right now. Uh, you know, y'all are coming off a, a, a strong spring season, had some big moments, uh, but a lot of players are starting to, um, you know, see their first action uh, with this team. And, and <laughs> I think we might have lost it. <laughs> Hold on, just a second to get him on. Just one moment. We're having some trouble getting coach in here. We'll bring the players back here in just a second. Are we there now? Yes. Yes, we're good. Lauren, can you hear us? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, no, actually, we can. We can hear you, <laughs> hear you now, but we weren't a minute ago. Sorry there. Day one of practice uh, was earlier today, so, some good training sessions. Tell us about what day one was like for you all today. Um, so this morning we woke up and we had our yo-yo test. So that's our fitness test. And basically everybody just ran that together to um, – that's kind of what we do every year to get the season started, like preseason. And then we started our first – actually, after that, we went and we got all of our gear. So a lot of us are wearing it right now. So yeah. Got some cool stuff. <laughs> and then um, we had a second training of the day at 4.30 where we played 11 v 11 for the first time, which was super fun for everybody. I actually tore my ACL this summer, so I wasn't playing. But um, as you can see by my neighbors. But um, everybody else, it was just super cool, like, to finally be able to touch a ball because we've – Everyone's been here for like five weeks now, training and working really hard to just get ready for this new conference. In getting out there today, uh, across the board here, 
a great uh, season. His co coach has actually joined us here in the office. All right. <laughs> <laughs> from one side of campus to the other real quick for Coach. Sorry for our technical difficulties here. Uh, coach Lauren was just telling us about, uh, you know, getting going on day one here. Coach, tell us a little bit about how day one went. Uh, I think it was great, right? I think anytime, you know, you get an opportunity to to get a group of players that have been excited to be together for, you know, for a freshman a couple of years, right, for a returners a few months, to get them back together, let them train, uh, let them play together for the first time and kind of get some of those those jitters and that excitement out. Like, I think the energy today was, was awesome. And when you look back at the spring, uh, such a unique situation. You usually don't get as much play on the field during that time. Yeah. Uh, what What was that like to to prepare you for this fall? Well, I think it I think it was totally different in in so many ways. And I think what it made us do was, at the end of the season, kind of sit back, reflect, uh, think about how the difference in a COVID season and and what that asked our players to do physically or what what that situation called upon for our players physically. How do we then put them in a position to be successful having a playing season, a short break, and then another playing season for the first time in any of their careers? Uh, I want to bring up the ASUN map and uh, a new league this year. Transition to the ASUN conference, uh, a more southern league will be pretty much the most northernmost team in this league, which can actually have its advantages sometimes. People think it's the opposite, but uh, definitely an advantage in, in many ways. What does this league look like in women's soccer? Uh, I think it's an exciting league to be a part of. It's it's full of schools that are no, you know name brands that people know about. That uh, it, it's going to be it's going to be a challenge, right? But it's a challenge that we're looking forward to because I think we're capable of winning every game in conference. I don't think there's anybody in this conference that we're afraid of um, by any stretch of the means. But I think it's one in which we're going to face challenges and go through adversity that we haven't been able to or haven't really been called upon to face until this point. I want to bring our team back in here and, and ladies. What, what was it like the first time when you heard the ASUN conference? What was the excitement level amongst the team? And uh, what are you really looking forward to uh, with this transition to the ASUN? Um, I think everybody was like super, I mean, at first it was kind of like nerve wracking because they were like, oh, we're going to make this big announcement in like a few days. And we were all like, oh, what is it? What is it? And there was like rumors going around. But then I think once it finally happened, we all were like actually really excited to just be able to go new places like, travel to Florida and places like get on a plane where we hadn't done that before. And so we're really excited to just kind of see like new level competition, new places and like make a good name for ourselves from the start. A couple of you uh, from the state of Florida. So um, what's going to be like getting to head back uh, down south this season? Um, we're really excited about it. Um, I feel like the competitions down there is really good and it'll give us a chance to play in front of our hometown people and it should be really exciting. I know a lot of folks watching uh, parents and, and friends and family from all over the country tonight talking about this soccer team and, and Matt, the support that we've seen financially for this team has been uh, so uh, important to its success. And, and one way you can support this program is donate to the Colonel Club and to the EKU soccer program directly. Uh, you can do that tonight through ekusports.com and, and coach just talk about what those philanthropic dollars do for this program and how important it is. Well, I think a lot of what it does is expedite our growth, right? We talk about evolution. We talk about growth uh, on the field. And I think when someone believes in that message and someone believes in the direction of this program and then they're able to give, I think what that gift does is just help us along, right? It takes us from talking about it and having ideas and, and having a, a plan but it takes money to get that plan uh, into 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 action. Earlier today, this team got out on the field for the first time, and a couple of pictures from earlier today. And coach, when we were talking earlier, roster of thirty, and, and really two thirds of them are going through their first season. Talk about that challenge and, and what's ahead in that respect. Yeah, I think this particular group is young. I think they're talented. I think they're incredibly hungry. But I think the challenge is going to be. Uh, when adversity comes, because it will come as it does in every single season, is how do we respond, right? Do we respond like grownups and adults and professionals, or do we, do we become overwhelmed? And so I think, you know, the, the group of players that have been through a season, uh, both players that are healthy and players that uh, are not able to compete at this point, we're going to be relying on them to help us get through those moments. And I want to talk 
to you about culture a little bit, but first we'll let, let the players kind of chime in on, you know, what, what is so important about culture and how, how has coach done a, a great job of instilling that and maybe a little bit about how you would define our culture here uh, within soccer at EKU. Lady. Um, I think one thing with us, like our culture is we emphasize so much around like just being a family. And I remember like my freshman year, we had a different coach when I came in and then Matt came in in the spring and he completely changed the culture around into making it to where we were just so like a tight ended family. Like we're all like, we all just are super close amongst every grade. Um, I mean, like all of us are really close. We're all each in a different grade. And so I think that's just super big is like, um, I don't know if you guys have anything to add, like just. Yeah, we just mm -hmm. always stress like the family aspect. And so I'm a sophomore this year. So I came in last year not knowing what that family really meant. And then I realized I'm spending every single day with these girls, every moment of the day, like especially in preseason, we wake up in the morning, we train or lift, we go eat breakfast with each other meeting whatever it is and then we have our second practice we eat dinner together like you're with these girls all day so it's inevitable like you're going to become a family and it just comes so naturally because everyone has the same goals we all want to be close and we all just have that love for each other which makes it really easy to keep the culture that we're looking for i think over time too like since um i mean ever since matt got here too we like every year we've added to this and it's gotten better every year and i think this year we have a really great team and like it's really noticeable how that culture has shown when you're together, when you're together all day, like you all are, do y'all find some time for a little fun or some humor in your life? Kind of like <laughs> earlier tonight, I think a little bit. For sure. Yeah, we do. Yeah. I mean, right now it's a little tough because we're always like you know on the go. But I think we all like we always end up spending time together. Like we go what we go bowling, we go to Lexington get ice cream, we do all kinds of stuff. We just we have movie nights, dinner nights. Um, we have fun. So. <laughs> Coach, I know you love to hear the camaraderie, the family atmosphere of all that. Uh, just to elaborate a little bit on culture and what you see out of these kids talking about that. Yeah, I, I think I find a huge amount of pride to hear them speak upon growth, right? Like, I think everything that we're striving for as a coaching staff is to layer a foundation of relationships um, into talent, athleticism, grit, right? A lot of those other ingredients that it takes to be uh, a championship program, right? And have a championship mentality as a family. Um, I think, you know, for us and what we try to do is, is establish a relationship on a personal level. Um, because I think when you've connected with someone, you know who they are, you have that much better of a chance of getting them, right? And, and having them um, or them realizing, right, the, that they're capable of things that I don't even think they're uh, really able to realize at that point. You'll have two exhibition games coming up. Uh... We'll travel to Dayton on August 10th. Welcome Marshall here to Richmond on August 14th. Uh, that will also serve as a parents weekend. So you'll be excited to get everybody in here and really uh, expand on that family atmosphere even more that weekend. Just talk about how that weekend kind of comes together and what that means for having everybody here on campus. Well, I think for a lot of parents, this is their first time that their, their children have left their homes, right? And so for them to have an inside look into what it's really like to be a part of this family for a 48-hour period I think is really important. And, and I think when players are cohesive and parents are cohesive, the experience that a player will have in their four-year period is, is magnified. It's better. It's, it's more fun. Um, I think this particular parent group over the past two years has been really good at traveling to away games. So we've gone to away games and we've had more fans there, which is something that I take a lot of pride in. And I think that these players should recognize and the family should recognize that you can swing a result based on how many people are at the game there to support you. Uh, but we do a lot of post game uh, potlucks and tailgates and parties. And I think it's the atmosphere that we're trying to create where we want people to want to be there every single game. Like we never want someone to, to make the choice to go to another event. They, we want them at our game every single time. The first chance to do that during the regular season will be against IEPUI here in Richmond on August 19th. It'll be a great challenge to start off. Uh, the season they had returned a couple of players who scored last year, return their top goalkeeper. Uh, before you take on the road, you'll go to in state rival Northern Kentucky on August 22nd. Uh, they were eight, one, and two last year and won the Horizon League. Uh, so great challenges await you, and I think none more so than a trip up to Milwaukee early in the year, a team that was nine, two, and one a year ago and, and had and actually won a game in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and also a team that we beat my first season, even more important. Yeah, for sure. Um, 
I think when you get the opportunity to face top 50 teams in the country on a consistent basis, it's only going to prepare you for conference. Um, yeah, I mean, those teams had great seasons in the past, uh, but I think those are games that we expect to win. Um, I, I think it's really important that our players never really look at records. They never pay attention necessarily to the name that's on the on the, the jersey of the person that they're playing across from because, you know, the second you start doing that, your chances of winning that game are they're shot, right? So for us, it's it's let's go in with the championship mentality every single day, right? Focus on how we prepare for the game, right? And then show up and, and live in the moment in these opportunities. And, and I think we'll be really good this year. Three teams that finished in the top 25 a year ago, or in the top 45 of the RPI featured on this schedule. So um, a, a challenge awaits, but uh, one your team I'm definitely ready to take on. Uh, one other non-conference game let's talk about is, is Kentucky. They'll come, be coming in here on uh, September 9th, a 4 p.m. matchup over at the soccer complex. And, and the goal that day definitely breaking the attendance record. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the last time they came to us, we broke our previous attendance record and, and hosted 1,049 people. Uh, our our goal and, and our serious goal, and when I, I expect to break, is to have over 1,500. And I want to continue to push those numbers as long as I'm head coach here at this program. Um, I think anytime we get an opportunity to play a power five school at home, you got to take advantage of that. I think we played relatively well when we hosted them in 19 and, and lost that game with two really late goals. Um, and I think it was a little bit unfair of a result, but UK is a great team. They've got great players, but I think we're a great team, and I think we've got great players too. Today, day one for this group that you see on your screen right now. Uh, Coach, day one is so important because you don't have a lot of time before you play a game. I think that's one of the unique things about uh, the collegiate soccer world is you're you're having about seven to eight maybe sessions before you're actually playing a game. And uh, with such a short season, it's so important for things to mesh early. Just talk about what you try to get done in this week heading into that first game, first exhibition game, and, and what your big goals are over the next week, week and a half. I think the big goal is comfort, is comfortability in terms of the way in which we train, uh, what we're trying to, to accomplish tactically. And then really just continue to push our cohesiveness and our relationships. Um, when we set our standards in the way that we want to play, the way that we want to train, if we can hit those standards, I think we're going to have as much time as we need. Let's bring the players back in here for a second. Uh, I think we can hear them now. We may not be able to see them for a second here. But uh, ladies, you know, when, when you have so much youth, those, those of you that have been around for uh, a few days here on campus, uh, how important is it for you all to find ways to help teach them? And, and are there any tricks of campus, any any tricks of uh, the way things are done around here that you all try to impart on them? I don't know if we have any tricks, but um, we have been, I mean, so a lot of our um, younger players right now are all in the dorms with some of them, like are rooming with them. So we live in a house, but they're in the dorms with them. And so I think that's really helpful to do like in the beginning, like it's preseason time to really like show them like the way around and like get them like they'll walk places, like walk around campus. Um, we pick them up, drive them. We show them the shortcuts <laughs> in terms of tricks, but um, I don't really know what exactly. <laughs> but um I mean, it is definitely like difficult. We have them, not difficult, I meant it's, it's easy, but we have them over at our house and um, we've had dinners a few times. And so like just kind of getting to know everybody and being comfortable in that aspect is really important. Um, we do have a girl too, also from Spain. And so she is an incoming family member and she doesn't speak much, much English. So that's really kind of interesting for us to learn her language and also um, teach her and like help her understand as well. So that's been probably our biggest challenge, but it's been fun. and. Um, it's been going well, so. I do actually have like a few tricks with that. <laughs> yeah, the other day we were just sitting because we both live in the dorm, so it was easy to connect, which I think is really important since she is from Spain. I'm glad that she's in the dorms with half of the team rather than alone somewhere else. But we invited her up and we were asking her like keywords that she says on the field because our one of our coaches pointed out it's really hard when you're learning a language and then you're playing a game and you have to translate something on the fly while a ball is coming to you or someone is running past you so i asked her like a few words that we could use in spanish that hopefully we'd be able to memorize and she was saying like aquí if she needs the ball like we'll all start saying like aquí aquí <laughs> so no so then we can play her the ball and just little phrases like that because we're gonna try to do everything we can to help her out because with this language barrier like it's not easy for her.
Coach, you, you pointed her out on the field to me earlier today and probably one of the most with international experience yeah. on this team. Yeah, I think I think Norea comes from um, a pretty high-level pedigree. I think uh, she's someone that has an immense amount of talent. Um, but I think this this game and, and this team is not about one player, right? Um, I think Norea has you know, been called in the 19s for Spain and, and so on and so forth, but it's going to take every single person on this team for us to win games. Uh, we spoke of it earlier, the youth. You're, you're really young in goal. Four, four young keepers yeah. ready to battle it out yeah. for a yeah, yeah, yeah. for a chance for that starting position. What's that look like for you? Uh, I'll tell you in two weeks. You know, <laughs> it's uh, it's it's a challenge. I think each player brings uh, such a such a serious talent um, in terms of of the position being better than it's been in the past. I, I think this is this is a really good group of players, uh, but everybody is different, right? Uh, there's different skill sets. There's different um, levels of experience, and, and and I think it's going to be such a, a crazy just battle, right? Um, which is which is really where we want us we want to be. I want to bring that A Sun map up one more time and, and take a look at that, and coach. Let's talk a little bit about this schedule um, that awaits you uh, when we when we look at the the conference slate. Uh, September 23rd, Thursday evening, a trip to Florida Gulf Coast, a, a quick trip to Florida to get things going. Uh, also a game at Stetson. When we look at the conference, what uh, excites you about this conference schedule? Who, who has been the ones that have stepped forward over the last couple of seasons as you kind of looked ahead to this year? Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of the programs that have a lot of history of success, you're going to look at Lipscomb, you're going to look, look at Florida Gulf Coast, you're going to look at Liberty, Kennesaw State, North Florida most recently has, has had a, a couple of really special players and have been very successful. But this conference up and down is talented, they're athletic, they're dangerous, they're hard to defend, uh, but so are we, right? And, and I think that's that's the good position that we're in is, is now we get to go challenge ourselves at the next level um, against teams that win NCAA tournament games, which is where we want to be and where I expect us to be as a program also. Um, but I, I think most importantly, this conference, it's it's about student experience, right? And for our players to, to be able to travel to, to different locations and have different experiences and new experiences, um, I, I can't I can't be more excited for them. Uh, four game home stand in the middle of conference play. Jacksonville University will come to town September thirtieth, October third, uh, North Florida, October seventh, North Alabama, and October tenth, Lipscomb. Uh, before two game road swing, and then ending the regular season October twenty third, Bellarmine, an in state opponent, will come to town. Chris Tinius brings his squad over to the EKU soccer field on October twenty third at one p.m. Coach. Uh, so much to be excited about right now with the EKU soccer and what's going on. Uh, beautiful pitch that you all were practicing on earlier today. Um, one thing that stuck out last year was Billy Clark, a uh, 2021 NCAA Women of the Year nominee. And just tell me a little bit about that over the last year with her. Yeah, I think Billy, Billy is such a unique story, right? I, I think someone who picked up playing the goalkeeping position very late. Um, before I got here, hadn't really had many opportunities to be in goal. Um, and I think was one of those players that embody a mentality of growth as opposed to like, what's in it for me this very moment, right? And when she was hit with adversity uh, on the field, off the field, I think she always rose to the occasion, which I think is something that you can you can only hope for on, on us as a consistent basis as Billy brought. I think the other things about Billy, she was a full-time EMT, um, she's she's going she's going places and, and has been able to manage a lot all at the same time um and i think it really represents this family incredibly well and deserves to be recognized uh for how she lives her life one of the most prestigious awards the nca gives out the nca woman of the year uh, and eku's nominee billy clark from ek soccer last year let's bring in our players one more time and we see them uh <laughs> It's just I think there's a lot of laughing with this yeah. team. I think we, it, it seems we have a good time with this crew. Uh, which one of you has the best uh, presence on social media? Who wants to take that claim? Who are you? Probably Audrey. Probably. Definitely Audrey. <laughs> do, do we need a shout out for an account while we're on here? Plug it. Uh, Audrey, Audrey Anderson 7. Audrey Ann 7. Audrey Ann seven. Just Ann. You can follow me too, Lobars, L-O-B-A-R-C. 
and any anything, uh, coach, we got to watch out for for them on social. Any uh, entertaining things? Uh, I don't know. I don't have social media, which is no. <laughs> <laughs> going to curse all at the same time. Um, but I, I think you know, anytime that they're able to show who they are as normal people, like the, these these women are are unbelievable. We're very very lucky to have this, this group. Ladies, we appreciate you joining us tonight. We're going to close this thing out with Coach, but uh, thank you all so much for your time tonight. Get recovered after uh, day one of practice. I know it was uh, probably a rough one with Coach. Get Getting going here only a, a week or so away from uh, that first exhibition game on the 10th of August in um, up in Dayton, Ohio, before coming back home. We'll see the home crowd on August 14th. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Coach, great crew there tonight. It's great to have them with us. Um, you know, when you when you look down this roster, thirty kids, um, really working hard out there. Uh, how important is it that fans come out this season and, and enjoy soccer or DKU soccer complex? Uh, it means everything, right? I think when when I when I took over at this program, I think our attendance numbers were were not where they need to be and not where we expect them to be. Um, I think. We've, we've met some challenges in terms of fan experience stuff head on, right? I think that's going to be an improvement over time, um, something that's going to be better this season than it has been, you know, right? As you kind of step, uh, step up the stairs in, in terms of our growth. But I think when you can have uh, a crowd that's engaging, that uh, isn't afraid to talk a little smack, like that's, that's stuff that will change results and make opponents uncomfortable. And, and I think the people of Richmond and the people of this university are passionate they're opinionated and they're wonderful and, and I want them to be there and I want them to see uh, see the product on the field, get to know our players better on and off the field and, and really be proud of the product that we're putting on uh, because I think it's it's one that's it's continuously getting better and I'm really proud of it. Soccer is great growth professionally in this state. You're seeing uh, mm -hmm. what's going on in Louisville, a uh, place you're familiar with, Cincinnati, yeah. kind of elevating themselves in, in the region. Uh, big things happening here at DKU, too. No mm -hmm. question about it. Let's talk a little bit about how you can support this program, and, and that can happen by a donation to the Colonel Club or uh, any of our 16 sport programs here at EKU. Uh, feel free to consider a, a donation to the EKU soccer program. You can do that at ekusports.com on the Colonel Club page, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. One thing we're excited about this upcoming year is the Big E Association. It is our place where we can – uh, welcome former players in. We're excited to host a tailgate for some of our soccer alums later this year. We'll get information about that out very soon. Uh, but an opportunity for you to engage and interact with uh, our current student athletes. But we can't wait to have everybody uh, as part of the program here. Season tickets for many of our sports are on sale right now. Uh, EKU football tickets are available. EKU men's basketball, EKU women's basketball, and EKU volleyball seats are now available at ekusports.com. We can't wait to see you as well over at the EKU Soccer Complex. Complimentary admission throughout this upcoming 2021 season. Uh, cannot wait to see some big crowds out there, including looking forward to breaking an attendance record on September 9th uh, when in-state rival Kentucky comes to Richmond, looking to get over 1,500 fans and break the school record for attendance. Other ways you can support EKU athletics include the 1909 Society, a new group that highlights some of the Largest donors in EKU athletics, a $5,000 commitment to the 1909 Society must include a $2,500 donation to the Colonel Club and a $2,500 investment or donation to the program or sport of your choice. Uh, so a $2,500 donation to the EKU soccer program along with that donation to the Colonel Club could make, go a big way uh, in impacting the student athlete experience here at EKU. The 1909 Society, one of our newest uh, opportunities here at EKU. Feel free to reach out to our Colonel Club staff, Grant Stepp or myself, Robert Sanson. We'd be happy to talk to you in any way we can to meet your passions uh, of philanthropic giving here at EKU. It's been a great night. You're talking EKU soccer coach. So glad you could join us. Uh, one more time, let's just talk about how important it is that people come out and support. And, and, and also, if they, they're not going to be able to join us here in person, follow this team, be engaged with this team, uh, support philanthropically. It makes such a big difference for yeah, this program. For sure. In the age of NIL, right, getting getting access to our players is, is is hugely important. Getting to understand who our players are, where they come from, right? We have players from Lexington all the way to Castro, Dallas, and, and Spain, right? So I, I think for us, it's it's 
pursuing greatness. It's pursuing growth, evolution of the program. And, and your ability to give uh, to our program and to our players means everything, right? You can kind of change their experience single-handedly. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. Uh, just a week or two away from game one of the 2021 season. Can't wait to see you out at the EKU Soccer Complex and joining us throughout this year. Look forward to talking to everyone soon. If we can do anything for you within the Crown Club, please contact us.